Hello again. Welcome back to Discovering the Real God, looking at the parable of the tares and the wheat, asking the question, who are the tares? So I left off last time, I said we were going to look at uh, the crop, the wheat and the tares from an intellectual or biological level, uh, see what we can make of it all. And um, so let's look at that. There are several species of tear and um, they amount to the same thing and I mean really we have to take it seriously at this biological level because Jesus made the comparison now he wouldn't have done that if it weren't uh, essential to the plot if you like so he tells us uh, that it's tares and wheat he might he could have used something else I don't know we could have used but bananas and coconuts but he didn't uh, it, there's a there's a reason for it and we can see this right actually the more you look into it the more you can see it there's several species of tear uh, the other names most commonly are darnel uh, then meadow grass false wheat rye grass and cockle uh, the latin is Lolium temulentum or poa temulentum. Uh, temulentum is actually the species for the name, and then you've got uh, other little bolt on names uh, to that. But um, the literal translation uh, from temulentum is intoxication. <laughs> so, in other words, it's uh, the literal translation is something like drunken meadow grass and it is toxic uh, like alcohol if, if, if you have too much alcohol you know it um, poisons your body so uh, in the same way I read that if you have enough of this uh, of the tares of the, the rye grass if you eat enough of it it can poison you fatally so um, pe people I've heard say um, that the roots of the tear entwine themselves in a sinister way with the wheat well I, I don't think it's a, a, a sinister thing I think it's if, if you're a gardener you'll know that um, if you if, if a big weed grows up with a it next to a, a an equally uh, sized plant and if you pull the weed, weed up it'll, it'll bring the plant with him simply because the roots are, are searching aren't they for nourishment and they just cross paths and intertwine it, it, it's just uh, part of God's creation that, that it works that way but my research tells me that the wheat and the tares cannot be distinguished in the early stages uh, unless it's an expert an expert can can do that apparently um, but anyone uh, can see that when the plants are mature there's a difference between the tares and the wheat the, 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 the tares particularly are, a, are a, a dark color very dark almost black color and uh, so that they're distinguishable at maturity so that gives us something to think about doesn't it and uh, wheat has changed uh, which sounds a bit silly but, but when you think about it I, I uh, spent a lot of my childhood a lot of time during my childhood on my uncle's farm here in Lincolnshire and um, I had a wonderful time with him he he had three daughters uh, he didn't have a son so um, he enjoyed taking me with him so I was just like a I suppose a bit like a an adopted son for, for a, quite a number of years he did he did have a son of his own eventually uh, but uh, yeah uh, it was great for me because uh, I got to be able to travel all over the place with him and he used to go into the into the fields and look at his crops and um, 
I noticed that over the years that the, the, the wheat has changed in as much as nowadays they are very stocky stems, they're very short, uh, they used to be very tall and wispy uh, stems to, to the wheat and they, 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 uh, the, the heads are, are much bulkier, the grain is much bulkier than it used to be. You get a bigger yield, in other words, per acre. Nowadays, it's phenomenal, really. Um, but they're, they're, they're hybrids. The plants are hybrids. So, you know, the, the, what, what um, Joseph would have described with his seven ears on one stalk, that, that wouldn't be a possibility with today's hybrid wheat. Uh, the plant itself has morphed into to what it is today, producing a great yield uh, to feed us with. So the keys, um, taking the bullet points, if you like, from the explanation or the, or, or the secret keys Jesus explained is that the one that sows the good seed is Jesus himself, the Son of Man. The, he is the head of the church, and he sowed his seeds. Okay. The field is the world. The, the, the church is in the world. And it's funny, actually, one of my friends, uh, Stuart by name, said, if the church is in the world, why are we hidden in buildings, why, why have we got all these buildings and we've all got this holy huddle inside a building expecting the, you know, the people to come into us when we should be in, in the world um, making disciples of people and I thought well it's, it's a good point from this parable the unfortunate thing is that the world is in the church now it's the other way around, the, the world's leading the church instead of the other way around the fields of the world, the good seed are the ch children of God, <coughs> the children of the kingdom, the tares are the children of the wicked one. It, it's funny that, the children of the kingdom, because I don't believe all Christians are uh, in the kingdom. I don't believe all Christians are the bride of Christ. Um, my friend Maurice Barrett has written extensively on this subject, so I'm not going to try and um, talk about that today. But, uh, you know, a, a book called Will the Real Christians Please Stand Up is the first one in that series. So I commend that to you. And um, I don't want to interfere with what I'm doing now to, to break off and talk about that. Tears are the children of the wicked ones, so they're Satan's kids. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, naturally. Jesus sowed his seeds, the devil sows his seeds. The harvest is the end of the world, or the end of the age, as you might want to call it. And uh, the reapers are the angels. It says, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Interesting. And them which do iniquity. Well, we know the iniquity, but those that offend. Are you offending God with your lifestyle? And shall cast them into a furnace, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's Matthew 41 to 42. Who are the tares? What are the possibilities? There are there those throughout the Bible who are identified as Satan's children. They were referred to very often as sons of Belial or Belial, depending on your pronunciation. Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Deuteronomy 13.13 13. So that's a reference 
to those children of Belial, Belial. And uh, I noted there were 16 references uh, to that, both in the Old and New Testament. Notably, uh, I thought of, I didn't sort of go through it all, but I, I, notably I thought the, the, the sons of Eli, the chief priest, when um, it was obvious that they were, were, were um, really far away from God, they were cheating and you know going with women and all, all the things that you associate with uh, paganism if you like they lived that kind of life and people knew that the, the common people recognised it as with the sons of Samuel because Israel said to Samuel make us a king to reign over us because you're getting old and your sons don't follow in your ways. They, they were recognised, you see. So they they can't be the tares because they are identifiable. The tares are not immediately identifiable. Oh, I'll come to that. I believe they are if you're walking in the spirit. But, but you know that's another that's another uh, facet of it, which I'll talk about as we go on. So we have an example in. Acts 13, Elimas the sorcerer, who blatantly opposed the gospel, and Paul called him a child of the devil, and cursed him with blindness for a season. So he was identified, and so he can't be a tear. People like him can't be a tear. We know that there are children of Satan who are have their own following, it's got the, there's the Church of Satan, there are witches and wicker, and all of those things uh, that are blatantly Satan worship, you know. Um, we know that, uh, and um, they, they do infiltrate the church, they do do awful things, they put curses on the roadside and all of this kind of thing to cause accidents, which is bonkers really apart from anything else but nevertheless that's what they do um, they try to disrupt the mission of the church sometimes uh, successfully so but then they are identified sooner or later they're caught out so it can't be them I've actually been when I was a young younger Christian uh, new, newer Christian should I say uh, I was in church one Sunday morning and a man stood up and was uh, started to speak in tongues now it was a Pentecostal church so that wasn't unusual but you could tell it was absolutely awful it made the your spirit sink into the pit of your stomach when he started to speak and Pastor Weaver Paul Weaver who was our pastor at the time uh, and a jolly good pastor he jumped up and shouted the men around him to, to stop this man he said stop him stop him and uh, he was stopped people just put their hand on him you know it wasn't physical obviously they want to punch up in the church or anything but they just prevented him from speaking and uh, he walked out straight away he'd been, he'd been caught out he was identified so and I know this the stories of uh, of Satan my friend was telling me about uh, a certain man who who's made his life's work uh, in the church of satan to to disrupt the the church's mission and um indeed got to, a woman to go into a church and to seduce the pastor uh successfully and when that su su deduction was uh complete she made it known then and made it public so it would ruin the pastor it ruined the pastor it ruined his marriage and it ruined the church as well the fellowship and broke up the, the mission of the church so but the fact is the point about that is that they they they're caught out you know the sub subterfuge if you like is 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 exposed sooner or later and they're they're rooted out <laughs> to use a, a a good phrase for this parable they're rooted out before the end so it can't be them and uh, you know if you think of false religions hindus and uh 
you know, all of them, the Hindus, the, the Buddhists, um, uh, dare I say it, Catholic in, in, in lots of ways, um, uh, you know, the, there's the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, it's, it's all very, very obvious that they are not um, the Church of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ. They are not, although they use the name Jesus and abuse the name Jesus, really. They are not. I mean, really, um, years ago when the Jehovah's Witnesses came to your door, they didn't use the name of Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. But they do now because they found out it works. They, they confuse people. But they're, they're identified. I mean, we can all see them. You know, the, the rest of the, 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 the real church, if you like, can see them and identify them. So that, that can't be them, can it? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree <coughs> bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you will know them. So, if someone is obviously by their fruits, they're not walking the walk and talking the talk and living the life, then they are false. It's not just about prophesying falsely, it's about living falsely. And, um, you know, I'm not mentioning names, I think we all know people we only got to go on the God channel, or on YouTube indeed, and uh, there are preachers there that live in the millionaire's life, uh, they're living the millionaire's life on the backs of poor, gullible people, widows, uh, and, and vulnerable people who are sending them their last few pounds, or dollars mainly it is, I guess, uh, and they are living like kings and queens, you know, they may speak good words. They may speak the word of God accurately. But that doesn't matter. It, it, it's, it's the life. Take up your cross and follow me. With food and raiment, be content. It, it's idolatry. You know, it, it's, it's wicked. And they are identifiable. Because we all know, I mean, all right, they're Christ, they have got a Christian following, but I think um, if once you've become mature in the faith, you can see them for what they are um, wolves in sheep's clothing, identifiable. And uh, I believe they'll pay the price when they stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. They will pay a, a, a very Terrible price, I believe. Now the Pharisees in the day were they they were or claimed to be the sons of Abraham, and uh, Jesus said that they were children of Satan. So we're going to leave that there just for a moment, and uh, the next time going to look at the Pharisees as and see what we can glean from what the Bible says about them. So I'm going to leave that, I don't want to get into it now, so I'm going to leave that just for now and uh, we'll start talking about that in, in the next session, session number three that will be. Alright, God bless you and uh, look forward to seeing you again very soon. Okay, bye-bye now.